Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of Entropia Content. Not really sure what I'm going to do today. Today's what, Sunday morning at around 10 a.m. I slept in pretty late today, so you can see I haven't really played the game since yesterday. Left off in the same position. Don't even know where I am. I think I'm somewhere in the desert. Uh, maybe I'll try working my way back up to the oil rig. <laughs> I don't even know where the oil rig is on this map. <laughs> so I guess I'll just wander aimlessly, see where I end up. Now nah, let's go to the fucking oil rig. I can't wait. <clears throat> now I hope everyone's having a good weekend. UFC fights were pretty good last night. Now that Colby guy is so funny to watch because he likes to taunt everyone. <laughs> he goes on and on at the end how much he loves the army and the police. And that makes him the bad guy in the UFC and everyone boos him. I'm like, loving the army and police makes you a bad guy now? It's like our society really has switched to complete opposites. I don't know, when I was a kid, the police were considered heroes. And all the kids in the class, would, when we were playing in the playground, everyone would pretend to be a police officer as the good guy. And yeah, whenever kids made, made up lies saying that their parents had a really good job when they didn't, they would say that they were the police. <laughs> I know one friend of mine in school, he insisted that his dad was a cop for like up from kindergarten to like grade five. Everyone believed him. And then one day we went over to his house and we found out his dad was just a raging alcoholic with schizophrenia. He wasn't actually a police officer. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> All right, let's see where the hell I am. Never even been here before, I don't think. Woohoo! <laughs> is this a teleporter? What is this? Yeah, this is cool. Maybe I'll make this the new screenshot. Ooh. Always forget, I gotta move this out of the way for the screenshot. No, no, I'm starting to get a little bit used to it. At first, this whole opposite thing used to bug me a lot. Like when criminals are running up and down the street, raping and murdering everyone, and then p people are protesting to let more criminals out of jail and take away the funding from the police. An all-time crime spree. <laughs> it's kind of funny in a way. It's like it's almost like living in an episode of The Twilight Zone. <laughs> that was one of my favorite shows when I was growing up. If anyone hasn't seen it, I heartily recommend watching it. I don't know if they have a modern version, but the old school black and white ones, they're really good. It's like even William Shatner was in an episode. <laughs> Can't remember which episode was William Shatner in. I think it was the one with the plane, where he was a passenger on a plane, and he was just glancing out the window, watching the weather, and all of a sudden he's seen this creature attacking the engine, like trying to rip parts out of it and stuff. He's like, holy fuck, something's attacking the engine. So what he would do is he would call out to the stewardess and be like, yo, stewardess, look out the window. There's some creature attacking the engine. And then as soon as the stewardess came to see what he was talking about, the creature would hide underneath the wing. So the stewardess looked at him and was like, sir, I think you're on crack. <laughs> no, she didn't say that, but something similar. So that was a really good episode. I don't even can't spoil it for you because I can't even remember how it ends. If I had to guess, the plane crashed. <laughs> oh, I think I remember how it ends. They take away William Shatner to like the loony bin at the end. And then like they drag him off the plane kicking and screaming or something when the plane lands. And uh, after they're like, man, that guy was crazy. And then next scene, they showed this mechanic go over to the plane. He's like, whoa, something was tearing an engine apart. <laughs> yeah, so that show was good. It's like all these weird things would happen in the Twilight Zone. I don't know, sometimes it's like my life. <laughs> That's why I like it so much.
All right, what's new in Entropian News? I had a whole bunch of people asking to join me as friends on Facebook from Entropia. Appreciate that. Even had some people from the disc golf community. I think they're wanting me to come back out and play in the league. I was supposed to play today, but still too sore. And even if I wasn't too sore, I got so much shit to do around the house. I've literally got like 80 hours of pot plant trimming I have to do today or all my weed's gonna go bad. And I was actually supposed to finish it yesterday or it's gonna go bad, so fuck. I really gotta get my act together and finish. Get it in jars. Now I was thinking maybe after I get it all jarred, I'll do a total and see, share with you guys how much I managed to harvest. If I had to guess, so far I've harvested maybe three to four pounds. You know, I think last year I, I harvested around eight pounds, was it? So quite a bit. Now people are wondering when they hear you're only allowed to grow four plants and they find it frustrating, they're like, oh, four plants isn't enough. So you'd be surprised how much you can grow from four plants if you grow them right. The main trick I use is grow them indoors for part of the season till they get nice and big. Oh yeah, I forgot to say hi to everyone. Here I'm the antisocial rigor. So I figure what I'll do, since the rig is so busy, I'll just make a little quick trip around, see if I find any anyone missed to pick up. And see they're checking there too for extra oil. See normally when I pick up oil, it lands right about here. Sometimes over here too. And I'm surprised so many people are here at Arcadia camping out this rig. When you go to like Tulane, there's a rig giving like 10 times the amount of oil and no one's there. Or that made that just that one guy. And I think what kills it is there's the act, this not very active sweat community. If they had a better active sweat community, they would be doing better. It's so hoping for a little bit of oil on the outreaches of the level, but I don't see any. There's lots of Ortons. Now I was hoping to get one oil at least before I head and pick up some sweat and stones. Oh yeah, one of my viewers was posting that I should start signing up for the fruit and stone event because I pick up so much and I could enter to win prizes. So I'm thinking about checking that out soon. I was going to do it for today's episode but I've been really slacking. Haven't got any research done for the game. Now I'm getting a little bit distracted into time wasting type activities. I gotta get my act together. Yeah, I don't know what's the deal. Everyone seems to be just camped around the oil rig waiting for the oil to come out. Maybe what they're doing is leaving their avatar away from keyboard. And then if the oil hits them, maybe it just automatically picks it up. And they're standing in locations that normally get oil. That could be it. Oh, Orton right next to that guy. He's good as fucked. Now, I felt bad for this one girl in UFC last night. Like at one part of UFC I was thinking is a lot of women aren't cut out for UFC. Not to be sexist or anything, but it's like just like lifestyle choices. Like a lot of men don't really have families or kids. So if they're going around beating each other up and breaking their brains to the point where they get concussion syndrome so bad that they go insane, it doesn't really matter because like they're not having a whole family with kids and everything to support. So it's not like it's the end of the world for an entire family. That's where I get a little bit worried when women fight in the UFC is often they're, they're really focused on family type activities. Yeah! Woo! -hoo.
Oh fuck, the sorting's killing me. He's trying to lure him away before I die. Ah, uh, didn't lure him very far, but at least I got some oil. No, so this one girl, she comes to the UFC and she's like, yeah, she's going to be a pro UFC fighter. I'm like, okay, are you dedicated to being a pro UFC fighter? What did I find out when she's walking to the ring? She's getting married in a couple weeks. I think like a week or two after the fight. I was like, you got to be shitting me. Like, that has got to be one of the worst mistakes you could ever make as a professional fighter. Like, when it comes to marriages, that's like one of the most stressful times in your life. Like, I don't know if anyone's seen families get married before, but, like, usually it ends up, like, destroying everything. <laughs> ah, I'm back, everyone. Sorry I'm a little bit out of breath. Just carried my uncle there. He seemed a little bit heavy today, or I was just a little tired. <laughs> Probably me tired. Okay, let's check. Let's check the outpost. See what's happening. I haven't had much in the way of ped coming in. If anyone's helping support the show, you guys are slacking. <laughs> no, just joking. But if anyone can help, it'd be sweet. I'll show what my situation is right now. Ped flow center. My income, oh yeah, I've got 56. So thanks guys, you guys have already been helping shop. My account is starting to build back up again. Let's say hi to everyone today. Hello. Hey, everybody. Hi. 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 We're getting some news action. Now, just to finish the UFC story, God, did I feel sorry for that girl. So, yeah, in the interview while she's walking to the ring, everyone's like, oh, she has to get ready for her wedding soon, a couple of weeks away. And I was thinking in the back of my mind, as a fighter, the one thing you do before a fight is you take away all the distractions in your life so that you can focus on the fight, right? I was thinking, dear God, is there a bigger distraction than getting married? That's probably the biggest distraction you could ever have in your life. So you would definitely won't not want that just before going into a UFC fight, especially your first UFC fight. And the UFC even gave her a cakewalk. They fucking set her up to fight a girl with a bad losing record. So here there's this new talented fighter fighting against an easy fighter. Should just be a walk in the park. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh shit, she's getting married. She's going to have all that stress. It's going to totally fuck her. Not in a good way. Yeah, so what happens? The fight begins. And... It was really weird, like, I don't know if it was the nerves that did it, but this new fighter has this technique that is probably the worst technique I've ever seen in a fight. Probably the most dangerous you could ever do to get yourself injured. And then she starts doing it repeatedly. I'm like, holy fuck, man, this chick is going to end up crippled. Because, like, I don't even know, like, most people might not realize when you're a UFC fighter and you're going into a fight, after the fight's over, you should probably put aside a year to two of maybe time off to just be hospitalized because your body is going to be fucked after the fight. So that's why I can't really feel bad for UFC fighters. Some of them only make like 50000 a fight. And say you get a bad concussion in that fight and you can't work for a year, two years, maybe two and a half years. How much is that fifty grand worth then? Because then you're like, fuck, you can't even work, and you're probably going to have shitloads of medical bills. Hopefully the UFC is going to pay for some of that. It's like, I don't know, when I had my work concussion, I was in solitary confinement, like self-isolating, because I couldn't handle anyone speaking. If anyone spoke, I would have like a fucking panic attack and fucking end up just like fucking holding my head and fucking in agony. And like, Shh. so I was like, holy shit, like, I don't know, three months I went where I didn't speak to anyone. Just in my room, sitting alone in silence, staring at the wall for fucking three months. Until I could fucking handle data coming in again. Because it's weird, like when your brain acts a lot like a computer when you have a concussion. And the same way, it's like say if your computer was just, your hard drive is damaged and you can't take any more memory. It just rejects everything that's coming in. So people talking, rejects it, noise, rejects it, sounds, seeing things, any, any data coming into the computer, it just rejects it. 
So yeah, that was pretty fuck. Like that was really the worst situation I didn't think could ever happen. Like I always heard of concussions, but I had no idea that they were that bad. I was like, man, like if you get a serious concussion, well, it's basically your whole life is over. <laughs> So I was like, holy shit, man, this woman is planning on getting married in like a week or two after this fight. It's like, hello, more likely you should be booking time in a hospital so you can get your fucking concussions and stuff treated, right? You're not going to be going to no wedding with lots of people. <laughs> so I don't know, the fight starts and man, like she starts doing this technique. Like in the UFC, they have a rule where if you're on the ground, like sitting on the ground, your legs, your butt, anything's touching the ground grounded opponent you're not allowed to knee them in the face but this new fighter i don't know if it's her coach that gave her this technique or she developed it on her own but she does this squat so it's like she's almost like sitting on the ground but with like an inch you can barely even see it from the ground so she's basically in the vulnerable position of being so low that she can get kneed in the face but her body is not touching the ground so technically other attackers are still allowed to hit her even though she's in that super vulnerable position. Hey, hey everyone. Welcome back. Getting a little bit of lag because I got too much running. Let me close some things. There we go. Let's hope that helps. No, what happened was, is while you guys were gone, there was, let's see, let's, uh, everyone started putting that they're going to transfer locations, so they're not sweating here anymore, so I'm going to have to head out. So what I did is I just grabbed one of the Noozle pets and started sweating them, or the, the wild pets, and then I'll wait for you guys to get back, so I'll show you where the big event is. So everyone's probably seen me posting the sweat event on Arcadia, but let's let's go actually to it. So you go to the teleporter, and what you do is you pick the chemical factory. Chemical factory, see look at this, it's happening every time now. Like the menu's all fucked. I can't control the menu, the mouse and everything's messed. It must be just my computer that's doing this. Does anyone else get it? Like I can just move the mouse up and down and the whole list is dragging like I'm holding it but I'm not holding the button so maybe it's sticking on my mouse or something. That must be what it is. Alright so anyways let's try to get there using this fucked up system. Chem chemical factory. There we go. See, that's why when I move the mouse down to go click it, the menu moves too. It's like it's stuck to it or something. And it doesn't make any sense because the mouse isn't sticking for anything else, just Entropia. So this is where it is, the chemical factory, there's a turret, and there's more noozles, and there's lots of people here. Let's do a roll call to see who's all here. First avatar we have is Sledrum Cell, then the Gashi, or what is his name? Yeah, the Gashi. The person in charge of pulling today is hot chick named, Let's see if she can stop moving long enough, Sleeping Sun. So Sleeping Sun is in charge of the pulling. I like that. <laughs> then Hyperion is here, Axe is here, Tartrus, Tartra Mash, Aaliyah, Schnitzel's here again. Hey, Schnitzel, you're my favorite thing to eat. <laughs> Luxor Ordo. No, I'm half German, so I like my Schnitzel. <laughs> Doc Adam is here. Elijah Clone, Thirteenth Draga is here. That's kind of a neat name. Toganoski is here. Looks like he might be either a new character or a duplicate here, someone to take advantage of the agility thing. So when you create a sweat thing that has an agility involved, that's what ends up happening. You get a whole bunch of these new people that just created new characters to sell the sweat. Pure Flux is here. 
Sviz is here. Not to accuse them of being a duplicate character. Maybe they are actually are a new person. They just happened to start the game and already know where the sweat events are. But anyways, yeah, they might have a good mentor that's teaching them how to find the sweat events. GG96. Uh, Ronis or Ronis? I can't select them, so. Right, so big shout out to everyone here at the Sweat Circle. Appreciate everyone for coming out, making this an exciting episode. <laughs> Doesn't want to just be me all the time, right? Alright, so today let's get a quick spin in the Bitcoin Casino while we're waiting. We got 25,298 Satoshi. Let's give it a roll. 25,316 Satoshi. Woohoo! Right, I can hardly wait. Getting closer and closer to that 30,000 Satoshi goal. Thanks, everyone. I noticed my referrals dropped since yesterday. I'm down to 32 referrals now, but I also like 32. It's a good number. 32nd degree. <laughs> Sorry about that. Doing one hour recording and I've already been interrupted by my roommates three times and we're only at the 20 minute mark. <laughs> I try to explain to him, it's like, look, if I could just get one hour uninterrupted, I can finish, come upstairs, help you guys do everything. But if you keep coming down, interrupting me over and over and over again, then what do you know that one hour gets stretched out to two hours, three hours, because I'm sitting there pausing it, fucking waiting for them to stop talking so I can start the recording again. It's fucking annoying as hell, but at least it's a good challenge. I bet you if I had my own place, my own recording studio, and didn't have any distractions, I wouldn't have so much to fucking talk about. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. It seems like they also do a chat here contest, so let's see what's going on. Start on A. Let's get the party started. Guys, do I need to change my to a pistol or a different one. TET pistol for kill a team. Pistol please. No amps either. Some people use rings, not sure if those are allowed. One hour of heal support and purchase of 1k sweat for 2.5 ped for up to 10 players that answer correctly to a question and have less than 41 agility. So there this agility thing is screwing the game. Like this is one of those things where you make that agility thing, you're actually damaging the Entropian community because you're encouraging people to create fake accounts to sell the sweat. It's not actually going to stop people with higher agility from selling it to you. It's just creating a fucking problem. See, I bet you, like, these three people, they're all fake avatars by some of these people in the group that have over 41 agility. So, I don't know. I would just really recommend people doing these sweat events. Stop making people create fake accounts to take part. doesn't make any sense. Like, why are you rewarding people for creating fake accounts? It's not a good thing to reward. But anyways... I appreciate the efforts to stop people from taking advantage of it, but you're just going to have to accept that they will, no matter what. And trying these measures to make the problem not happen is just actually making the problem worse. It's like if you're thirsty and you think that drinking salt water is going to help fix the problem, I'm sure it may seem like it for a second when you get some water in you, but that salt's just going to kill you. Yeah, too much salt isn't a good thing. So whatever, I'll just not take part in the event and not create fake avatars like the people that are selling sweat here. <laughs> Alright, so anyways, let's continue pretending like we are in the event and it's not been set up to exclude people. During the event, without a warning, I will ask a single question. Ten correct responders will go on the buy list. Answers only in the local chat count. I will buy up to 10 1k sweat from the people on the buy list at the end of the hour. 
Remember, I can also buy less than one case sweat, so feel free to answer the question with any amount you have. Prefers at least a hundred sweat. This group does not buy sweat from resellers or alts, so it's big stuff. If you've seen buying sweat, you're disqualified from the host. So they do not support capitalism. They're into communism. See, this is, I don't understand this thing in Entropia, this fascination with excluding people that buy and resell items. This is how capitalist society works. People buy and they resell items and it goes on supply and demand. That dictates the price. Not some sort of fucking communist rules. So I don't know, like I, I shouldn't be bashing so much on these people about their event, but Really, when you start fucking the Entropia community over by making people create fake accounts to take part in your event, then you start implementing communism, where you're like, hey, these communist rules dictate the price that everyone should pay, and supply and demand do not have any part in it. See, what I should do is come to these events and be like, hey, I'll buy sweat for 2.6, and I'll buy any amount, supply and demand. None of this fucking communist bullshit. But I don't know. Some days I like communism, some days I don't. <laughs> it's like when I'm poor and need to leech off other people, that's when I love communism. <laughs> All right, so let's see. <laughs> All right, here's another cool thing. They run these missions, work days, blah, blah, blah. See, not to be a jackass, but really what I could do is go around and fucking just buy shitloads of sweat for one pad K. Come to these events and literally stand next to this communist fucking Ponzi scheme <laughs> that uh, did, tries to dictate prices. And I'll be like, hey, I'm, swelling, or I'm selling sweat for 1.2 a K, any amounts. Stand right next to the sweat circle while they're buying sweat from people. Just to show like, hey, like your communist rules, all it takes is one person with a buy and sell demand of capitalism standing next to them completely fucking fold your communist scheme into pieces. Because what are you going to do? Like, what happens if those people just bought the sweat from me and sold it to you? You can't tell them not to buy from me. It's like you can say, oh, I'm not buying from resellers, but how do you know? I could say, hey, my sales are more private, private capitalism. Did this person buy the sweat for me to resell to you? No one knows. It's capitalism. <laughs> I don't know, like, see, that's, it doesn't make any sense to me, too. If you've already capped how much you're buying and reselling, like you're saying 10K is the most you can do. So basically you're investing a dollar into this mission of real money. So why would you d discriminate against who can qualify? Like you think you're holding an event, your f expenses are fixed. Why wouldn't you make it open to everyone? Instead so of saying, hey, let's let's disclude people. If people wanna like take part in our event, let's say, no, you guys can't because you don't meet our special criteria. <laughs> I don't know, I think that's like when I was growing up in high school and there was always like parties for the cool people and then parties for like the, the riffraff, the people that didn't have any money. It's like, I almost started to get a little bit discouraged from hanging out with all the cool people that had lots of money because I was like, man, they're so kind of mean to the people that don't have money and can't afford to party with them. So what I would often do is just bring my money to the fucking parties where everyone was riffraff and hardly had anything and just like party with them try to share what I had it's like what am I gonna do go share it with a bunch of people that are already wealthy and fucking they don't really need any fucking they're not really having a great time I found most of the parties and people have nothing or even some of the better parties all right I'm back sorry I just got called away again now they're asking if anyone else wants to shoot I don't know, all the rules are too strict for me. I 
and I really don't have a lot of money to be spending. Maybe if I had the lowest enough agility that I could sell my sweat. <laughs> I guess I would have to create a fake account like the other people selling the sweat. <laughs> Now I was just going to say, so that's why I kind of like when people are partying and I seen how people get excluded because of class and all that, it was like when Entropia started that where they're like excluding people depending on what their agility class is and stuff, it just sort of brings up bad memories. I shouldn't really say the memories are that bad. Some of the misfit parties I went to are the best parties yet. That's why you find like people that have everything in life tend to like run out of ways to party. But man, people that have nothing in life tend to be very resourceful about ways that they can have fun with nothing. <laughs> That's why I like disc golf in a way. Really, you can have fun with nothing with it as long as you can afford a disc. If you got a couple free courses in your neighborhood, it's like you can go play golf every day for free if you want. Stick golf, actually, or ball golf, whatever you prefer to call it. I used to play that when I was a teenager because our university, actually the same course I'm playing at now for disc golf, it used to be a free ball golf course. But eventually they shut it down, and then it eventually it reopened as a disc golf course. So better than nothing. Yeah, so this is kind of a neat event. You can see, I shouldn't be just bashing. A lot of the stuff they do in this event is cool, how they're getting people together for sweating. This little trivia thing, I usually like doing trivia. If I wasn't so distracted about streaming, I'd probably do it. But no, this is how you can see, you can meet a lot of new players, get a chance to talk to people, see what they like doing in the game. It's like a real good networking activity. And don't worry, guys that hate sweating episodes, I won't be sweating all the time. I've got a lot more plans coming. we got that big auction episode coming up next Saturday, or is it Friday? I'll have to check again. But either way, Bonnie's auction, man, I'm looking forward to that. If I had to guess, neither of my items will get any bids, but I'm not sure. Maybe I could be wrong about that. I was thinking Bonnie's streaming is kind of has a lot of high rolling players watching. And a lot of people that don't, so we'll see. Yeah, I was looking at my greenhouse while I was upstairs, and I think I put the door on backwards. So I'm hoping if I put the frame back on the right way, maybe it'll fit better. And I'm, when I take it apart, I'm going to try bending it back into shape more. Hopefully I can get away without having to order any new parts and just fix the ones that I got bent with anger. I was thinking too, too bad when I swung it in anger that I wasn't holding it the opposite direction. There was like a 50-50 chance. And if I was holding it the opposite direction and hit it, it wouldn't have bent the wrong way. Because it like bent to bow out. So I was thinking if it bent to bow in, it would hold the fucking door even tighter. But since it bent to bow out, it fucking ruined it. So now it just falls off the track. Ugh. It's funny how many times I'm faced with a 50-50 chance in life and I always hit the wrong. At least it's some consistency. <laughs> now I was thinking because when I put the frame on, a few of the pieces were bending to fit. I'm like, wait a minute, they wouldn't have designed it to have to bend to fit. Yeah, and if anyone wanted to see the ghost train haze that I fucking I harvested, whoa. Well, it doesn't matter. I was going to say, whoops, I almost showed you something I shouldn't, but there was no boobs there. Alright, so this is one of the nugs of Ghost Train Haze. Let's see if I can get one that has better re resolution. My camera's mental. It's like when I zoom in on something, it looks slightly blurry, but as I pull away, it sharpens it. I wish it just had a manual focus so I could slide it without having to move the camera. Now you can see that it's still very fluffy, like leafy. And I was thinking the only thing that's different about this nug and the ghost train haze I got from the government. Oh, well, there's my new driveway if they wanted to see it. It turned out pretty nice, eh? There's another piece of my driveway. Looks pretty sweet.
Now we had an asphalt driveway before, but it was over 40 years old and it all caved in. So we're like, shit, we need a new driveway. We got the same kind, just brand new. Yeah, and if I had to grade my weed about how close I got it to the ghost train haze I tried before. I'm surprised. I'd say taste-wise, I got it maybe 8.5. It's a little bit off, tastes a little bit on the soapy side. But I'm thinking it's because I haven't cured it. It's only like six days old since picking. But man, it's really close. Like 8.5, almost borderline 9. 10 being identical, not being able to tell the difference. So I was surprised. I was hoping to get anywhere, anywhere above 5 out of 10 in taste, and I was going to be happy. So to be upwards of 8.5, almost a 9. That's fucking really good. And I'm really surprised at the buzz, too. I was like, I remember Ghost Train Haze being strong. I was like, I wonder if this one will be. So when I vaped it, I was like, holy fuck, it's the strongest weed I've had in a while. I think to rank out of all the strongest weeds I've had in my whole life, this is up in the top five, maybe even top three. So I'm like, holy shit, I actually grew some potent stuff. You can see the pictures. There's quite a bit of crystal on it. Oh, they killed my pet. <laughs> no, so buzz, taste, appearance. Yeah, that was the thing with appearance. The company that I tried Ghost Train Haze from before was called MD or Medical Doctor or something like that. Or Marijuana Doctor. So I don't know what MD stands for. But anyways, it's Ghost Train Haze by MD. And the buds were really dense nugs and very well trimmed. So it looked like just moon rocks or whatever, right? So I was thinking technically I probably could trim these nugs to look like that, but I'm wondering is, are they doing a process that makes it look like that more natural? So they don't have to trim it to look like that. It comes out like that normally, like really dense nuggety. So I'm thinking that's the only thing I really have to work on now is getting it less fluffy and airy and more dense and nuggety. Maybe once I get that density and nuggety, it'll... Come on, phone, shut the fuck up. <laughs> maybe once it's more dense and nuggety, the taste will match too. Or maybe after it cures for a while. The people say that when you put it in a jar and cure it, it changes the taste. That's I'm dangerous at this point, because I'm like, it's already at 8.5. Do I really want to change the taste? I'm pretty sure if I jar it and let it sit out in the heat and humidity, or, well my dark, cool environment as close as I can without being in the fridge. So I don't know, it's a risky proposition. But no, now I'm very optimistic because when I was thinking back in the day, what I was planning on doing is getting like a ranch going, like get a piece of land, have an off grid cabin and have myself reasonably self sustaining so that whatever I'm doing on that ranch is enough to pay the property tax and just keep the whole property afloat. Either like growing some sort of crop, apples, honey, whatever it is. So anyways, or yeah, whatever income. But I was always thinking like, man, I would always have to go into town to constantly get supplies because A, you got your food covered on the ranch. You can grow your own food. You can have your own chickens. All that's pretty easy. Like I grew up while well, my grandparents had farms. So I've seen what farming life is like. Sure, it's hard and a lot of work, but that's actually what I do best. So I'm actually not really that self-concerned about that aspect. But then I was thinking, what happens about like your leisure activities? Like, sure, you got your food and you can get a well, so have your own water. You can even get a distiller, so you can distill it all. You can get fucking hydro, do all that. Dental care is one of the big ones. Always have to come back into the city for that. But but really, if I had a ranch, I wouldn't want to be there all the time anyways. I'd still want to go and party in Toronto and stuff. I guess once the pandemic's over. But, like, do you really want to live where you party? Sometimes you just want to party somewhere and go back and have a nicer place to live. 
you know, but that was one of the things I was thinking. Could I ever produce all the booze I needed and produce the weed I needed? I was thinking, well, before it was legal to grow your own weed and the medical reasons were the only reason you could get it. So I was like, shit, that was going to be hard. But now that we actually can be thankful for Justin and the liberals, it wasn't all bad when they took power. They gave us the ability to off-grade even better than before. Now we're legally allowed to grow four plants. And as you can see with those four plants, if you do it right, you can fucking make shitloads. So anyways, I was thinking, wow, there's the fucking weed aspect covered because now I can grow it and actually get it really close to the kinds I order online. Like I'd say the kind Ghost Train Haze I grew is almost better than eight out of the 10 fucking varieties I've tried online. I think only online have I tried two kinds, well, I should say three kinds. Pedro's Sweet Sativa, that one was a good one. Liked it better than mine. Atlantis AK-47, I liked that one better than mine. And the original MD, fucking Ghost Train Haze by, yeah, MD. I like them better than what I grew. But that's the only three. Everything else, I like mine better. And I've tried almost every strain at the government. I even tried the government strain of MK Ultra, and they had it listed at almost 30% THC. I was like, holy fuck, man, that's like borderline hash potency. And I tried it, and I didn't like it better than this. I like this better. Stronger buzz from this, better taste. And mine's really smooth right now, because it's like perfect moisture. Oh god, I almost wish I, I should really just freeze it all at the consistency it is now. So when I take it out of the freezer, I could dry it a bit and vaporize it, perfect consistency. Oh, and the other thing I always worried about was booze, but then I found out about mead. I can't believe how easy mead is. If anyone hasn't heard about mead, basically when you want to make booze, you got your varieties like wine from grapes, beer from, from uh, wheats and grains or whatever. But in the olden days, it was the beginner step, like if you had never made any alcohol before, you started with mead. And what mead is, is it's uh, alcohol made from just honey. So when you're trying to make alcohol, one of the big steps to becoming a good person at making alcohol, I can't even remember if I did the message from the sponsor. Let's do it one now just to play it safe. If I did two, sorry. Today's Sunday. Today's Sunday Sweating Adventures were brought to you by Crack. Crack. It'll fuck you up. Woo! <laughs> Alright, welcome back everyone. It's always a challenge. When I go for the, the break, I'm like, okay, can I remember what the fuck I was talking about? <laughs> oh yeah, mead. Yeah, so mead, if you haven't heard, they sell it at various liquor stores now. You can get it at a place called a meadery. It's similar to a winery, except they make mead. And yeah, mead is beginner alcohol maker stuff. Well, some people would say you can keep advancing it, but it's the first beginner step if you've never made it before. It's the one thing that's hard about making alcohol is when you add the, the grapes to the sugars and the water, it ferments. And when fermentation happens, it's always not a guarantee. There's a chance it'll ferment into something good that you can use for wine but there's a chance it'll ferment and go bad. And then there's, they have to throw it out. You can't use it for anything. So that's one of the catches is when you're fermenting grapes and you're fermenting grains, the ratio of how often it turns good to bad isn't very good for beginners. A lot of beginners will have fuck it up and they'll make a whole bunch of bad batches first before they get the hang of it. And they're like, oh, okay, I'm doing better. Now I can make real wine. See, the thing with mead is honey is a natural preservative. It's like in the olden days when they didn't have fridges and stuff, you had two choices how to store your food. You could either soak it in salt, which would preserve it, or I guess three. Or you could soak it in alcohol, which would preserve it. Or you could soak it in honey. And honey is also one of the world's strongest preservatives. In modern times, we figured out another one, which turned out to be ammonia. But I was thinking, God, the only way they could get that in the old days was to piss on what they're eating. And I don't think anyone would try that. Pretty nasty. But anyways, so it turns out when you're making mead, because you're working with the world's strongest preservative, the chances of mead going bad on you is almost non-existent. 
So if you're making alcohol for the first time, mead's the best one to try because you're almost guaranteed success no matter how bad you fuck it up. <laughs> it's like you could accidentally spill dirt in it or something, it would still turn out good. Well, maybe not good with dirt, but... <laughs> Yeah, because normally grapes and like yeast or grains, you have to like have a really sterile environment where with mead, you could like, you could do it anywhere. You can mix it in your garage for shit's sake, so it would turn out okay. And the same thing with uh, the other alcohols, you can take mead and make it as strong as beer, which some people like because mead in beer form is a very sweet drink. So you can get it, so it's sort of like, you know, Sometimes college students, the girls, they'll drink like sweet drinks. Mead would be one of those for like the low percentage. But if you keep bumping it up, eventually you can make mead so strong that it tastes just like wine. So like if you could take a glass of mead that's like wine and put it next to like grape wine made from grapes, especially white wine, and you put two glasses next to each other and told people to pick the difference, it's actually a challenge to tell the difference. I'm sure most people could, well, about half the people would be able to. But I'd say about half would guess wrong. So that's one of the things I was thinking for off-gridding on a ranch in the future would be cool. You can make your own mead and you could grow your own weed. For a while I got really out of the idea of going off-grid because I was starting to get addicted to city life playing at the big disc golf courses, hanging around the university with all the babes. But I was thinking really the way pandemic life is going, it's like shit, maybe I really should look more into the ranch. Hey, this guy still is trying to sell his monster truck. This is that one that's for sale on Bonnie's auction. It only sells for a thousand percent markup. That's hard to believe. So that'd be what, 600 pet? Or no, 300? I was thinking it was one of those thousand pet items. But only two have ever sold. You can see that there were 30 pet, or maybe it's the same one sold twice, one or the other. So if anyone wants to check out Bonnie's auction, this is one of the items. Maybe I'll make this the screen cap. See, can I put auction, monster truck auction? Maybe that's all I'll put. Oh yeah, get this shit out of there. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, I got another message from China today that fucking bong silencer isn't arriving for any time soon. I think they just shipped it. Just weird, I could have swore I got a message. Oh yeah, it was the adapter to it that shipped before. So now it's a race. Which will make it here first? The silencer or the silencer adapters? Anyone want to place their bets? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, and I'll finish the UFC story. I forgot. It was kind of a gross story. I didn't even really want to tell it. So anyways, I'll just speed it up. What happened was the girl who was about to get married, she didn't do well in the stand-up, and her skill set was wrestling. So, you know Ben Askren, when he got his face kneed really bad because he tried to do that wrestling takedown? Well, he did it really fast, and the catch with that wrestling takedown is you have to go like this, basically, and dive in with your hands out, with your face forward. So when it turns out in wrestling, you try to do that really fast in UFC because if you do it too slow, someone's going to knee you in the face, right? So her move, this new fighter, after she was losing the stand-up, she decides to go do this wrestling takedown. And I don't know what it was, but she was doing it in like so slow motion that she was just like crouched near the ground, leaning with her face forward like this. I was like, dear God, that's not how you want to approach a fight, right? Like, you gotta try to do that wrestling takedown really fast so it doesn't leave you open for a long time. She was just stopped there like that in like slow motion. So you can imagine what the other girl does. She's like, holy shit, she's wide open for the knee. So she just comes and knees this poor girl 
right in the face, like full flush, like one of the worst impacts I've ever seen in a UFC knee to the face. And her face just exploded, like blood everywhere. Her whole nose, like gone, shifted over to the side, permanently disfigured for life. I was like, holy fuck, man. Like, she's supposed to be going to get married in a week? No, she's going to be going to the hospital for a long time. Like, she's going to have, like, breathing issues that she's going to be recovering for for years from that. So I was like, that's one of those things where you don't want to be preparing for a wedding in the next week. You really should be focusing on not fucking what you're going to be doing in the hospital. <laughs> so I don't know. That's one thing I think maybe too many guys fighting in the UFC wouldn't put a marriage, like, within the next week or two of their fight. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I recall a lot of fighters doing that, but... Yeah, it's one of those things. It's risky. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I shouldn't say it's a man and woman thing. There's probably a lot of guys that lost fights booking a, a marriage either the day of or similar to the day of the fight. Really got to focus on that. What a weird controversy, too. All the announcers kept saying that the ref made a mistake and how he handled it. But when I was watching it, like, I know refing because I've always wanted to be a ref. I've refed a few street fights and stuff. It's quite fun. But I know the rules for refing, and the ref did everything perfectly right. It was actually the announcers that were wrong. Like, the announcers were saying that the ref was wrong because he stopped the fight and then let it continue after, saying that you can't stop it for an illegal fight blow or no saying that you can't stop it unless the fight's over right or if once you stop it it's over you can't restart it i was like no no that's not true what the ref did is he saw the fucking blow land and her face exploded and normally when someone's like that bad injured that's when the ref has to say hey stop i gotta get the doctor to check if he can even continue that's what the ref was doing he wasn't stopping to like negotiate whether it was a legal blow or not he was just like hey I have to stop this, get the doctor to look at her. So sadly, the doctor looked at her and gave her the okay to continue. And then that's where the commentators were right. They're like, yeah, the doctor should have called that off. Her face was so badly disfigured, like she should have been going straight to the emergency room for surgery. They should have not allowed that fight to continue. So yeah, the same thing happened. She started crouching again like that, and the fucking girl fucking kneed her in the face again. I was like, oh my god, is she going to die? And then the ref stopped it. I was like, thank God. It's like, ref, that, so they were both partly right. The ref was right that you're supposed to ask the doctor if they can let it continue or not. Wasn't his call to make. <laughs> See, I was thinking like the doctor should have said her nose is not only broken, but there's almost nothing left. It was like shifted right to the side. So I was like, holy fuck, that's like surgery big time. Yeah, so I really hope that girl manages to recover. Who knows? Maybe she will make it to her wedding in a week and prove me wrong or whatever, but... Whew. Hopefully she makes a full recovery. Now, they say that's one of the dangerous parts in fighting. Once you get your nose broken once, you never breathe the same again. Your nose will never heal the same way it was. Unless it's like a miracle surgery. So that's another reason why I kind of feel bad when girls go into UFC. It's like... Guys are more accustomed body-wise to getting horrible injuries and still managing to live, but I don't know if girls would handle it as well. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe even better. Probably wrong. <laughs> Especially the horrible face disfiguration. Like, girls uh, have a lot of appearance-based like based, like anxiety where guys can look like shit not really care. <laughs> It's like, oh, my nose is bent to the other way. It's like, oh, just another day. <laughs> Girls would be like, holy fuck, my nose is completely disfigured for life. It's a nightmare. <laughs> All right, back again. We could be setting a new record. I'll go for maybe, what, 10 interruptions in an hour period. Was that like one every, that's over one every 10 minutes. <laughs> and it's funny too, it's like my roommates will leave me alone for the whole rest of the day. The only time they ever interrupt me is when I'm trying to record. I don't know what it is. It's just like one of those 50-50 draws. It's like I always lose. 
<laughs> oh, I gotta stop being so negative. Things are gonna go right this soon, one of these days. Just wait and see. Hey, we actually got two sweat circles going here. This is pretty impressive. All right, let's get a little bit of a readout for the entire sweat community. We got Rhaegar Lux, Seldrum Cell, Hyperion, Smart, Miss Flawless Minuta. Yeah, she does look pretty flawless. Hmm. <laughs> Tartar Mash, Schnitzel. Luxor Ordo, Doc Adam, Alicia Cloth, GG96, Sviz, Ronis, Ilya, and the Gashi. All right, let's go say hi to the other sweat circle. See who's all here. Yeah, I know what we should do. Oh, it's a tiger. <laughs> tiger fight him. <laughs> tiger knee. <laughs> Alright, we also have Sue. She's weak. <laughs> Toganowski. He is also weak. <laughs> Aptok Lucky. Very weak. Daniel, also weak. Axe, also weak. We got Samuel. He's weak. Oh, well, his agility is under 40. Ah, Sleeping Sun. She's medium. Her agility is over the amount required to sweat or sell the sweat. Marcelo Mars. His agility is 62. He's over the amount. Pure Flux. His agility is 40. His create character was created to sell sweat. <laughs> Who is the owner of him? Who knows? Probably one of the players that has over 40. Alberto. He is also maybe a character to created to sell sweat. His health level is frail. Tiger. <laughs> Tiger knee. Tiger uppercut. <laughs> now I miss playing Street Fighter. Street Fighter is actually free right now on PlayStation Plus monthly, but I've decided to cancel that service. I know I was really into gaming on PlayStation for maybe not even a total of a few days, so it's kind of a waste to to pay the membership, put all these free games on that I just have to delete once the free membership runs out anyway. Alright, let's do a little bit of scans for some of the higher up players. Seldrum Cell, he's medium. Agility 70. Hyperion, he's weak, but still over the amount to sell sweat. Miss Flawless? She's weak? You gotta be kidding me. Maybe she chipped out. Just judging by those pants, I say she's pretty uber. Let's see, what is Doc Adam at? Doc Adam's at 69. That's a good level. He's medium. Did we see what the gash he is? Boy, he's weak too. Kind of surprised with his clothing and stuff. You think he'd be more uber? Did we scan Cell? Yeah, I think we did. He's pretty cool. I wonder what I am. Guess I can't scan myself. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, so I hope everyone liked this episode to prepare for the big sweat event. You can see where it was, where some of the action is. I'll see if I can find any fruit on my last bit of my adventure before I log off the show. You can check and see if I, I got any other items today. I think these were from yesterday. We're getting close to a K sweat. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, and I picked up some more oil. So I'm over one pet of oil on these adventures. That's pretty good. Come on, fruit. Let's get some dung. Someone posted in the chat that they found a big pile of dung. I was saying that's good. Just make sure you don't step in it. <laughs> now, I would sell the sweat, but I'll leave some of the noobs to sell it. Or the people that created the, the duplicate accounts. One day, I hope that the sweat price will stabilize. That we won't have to create these socialist or communist programs to try to raise the price of sweat artificially it's not a bad idea like I do like the intent of it it's just anything that goes communist sort of rubs me the wrong way and anything anti-capitalist I like sellers and resellers as a sweat reseller myself I realize that the only thing that raises the price of sweat is more resellers so why would you want less resellers? Alright, so speed this up. Maybe what I'll do is equip the axe. So it can help me find what I'm looking for. Faster. What should we guess we'll find? Well, oh, there it is. I was going to start guessing, but didn't have time. Oh, we only picked up 50. Alright, so that's some of the items we got in today's episode. I wanted to try to get a variety and not just get the same, so that was good. Got some more sweat, stones, and oil. And we got some socializing done. It was kind of neat to say hi to everyone at the rig and the sweat circles. Check out the big weekend sweat events. Hope everyone else who is thinking of exploring something new for a change gives a Entropia or Arcadia some consideration and these big sweat events. Sorry guys for always being so critical of stuff and I'll try to be more positive about them. The agility thing isn't such a bad idea. I get that it has good intent. You're not really trying to create a whole bunch of fake accounts. <laughs> Alright, take care everyone. Um, let's see. Let's go to the links. Great right, for Patreon. If you want to join my other patrons, that'd be really sick. It helps me out a lot. Maybe one day I can start being a YouTuber full time, even after my uncle's done. Um, let's see, Society Six. Yeah, that's where you can get some of my merch. Finishing quick is my specialty. It comes on bed sheets. Very popular with the ladies. Swag Bucks is where you can get discount shopping online. Not only percentages, but also the discount codes. Game Kit is where you can get paid to play games. But I encourage everyone to do it through Entropia Partners if they haven't already. Hido TV is the get paid to watch videos. Similar to YouTube, but they split avid revenue between both the creators and the viewers. Not just the creators. And Bitcoin is the, the free spins. You guys see me do the free spins earlier. I'm down back down to 32 referrals. So if anyone can help me push me back up, I appreciate it. And speaking of getting pushed back up, we have the Virtual Mate Sex Machine. It's for adults only and for men only. But ladies, I'm not going to leave you hanging. <laughs> if you need help, just call me. <laughs> just kidding, unless you're near Toronto. And then we got the Entropia Zine, which has the links for... Or no, they have articles on all different content going on in Entropia. Encourage everyone to check that shit out. Uh, Raven Jade, she's the coolest vampire in Entropia. If you want to check out her stuff, she's got a store for t-shirts and websites for like YouTube and such. And what else? All oh, yeah, all the other Entropians, Serial Overdrive, Ken's Cool Channel, Bonnie's. I know there's lots more. McCallie, I'm trying to make a big list. I wish Pig Bennis would come back. He made some really good videos too. Alright, take care everyone. Um, let's see. 
if you happen to get any of that sulfur rock into your vaporizer and you vaporize rock and it tastes like shit, <laughs> give the show a dislike. No vaporizing rock. <laughs> but if it doesn't happen, you can help with a like, appreciate it, and take care, everyone. Uh, make sure you never buy the products from my sponsor because it will ruin your life. Bye for now. See ya. Here's three at the same time. Don't ever say I didn't give you anything. <laughs>